How you doing, James? Jesse! You son of a- What's wrong? Does your school only code in Java? Make it easy on yourself, James. C++ will always be second. Had enough? Okay, okay, okay. It's good to see you, Jesse. So tell me, what's the mission? You go in, easily take out 30 mercenaries, complete the code for the target, and then, just like every hero, you get the girl. So let me guess, you'll sit behind your desk and dish sarcasm, and then we banter back and forth during the mission. And it never fails, does it? Well, there's a first time for everything. Jesse, talk to me. I'm approaching the target's room. Two mercenaries headed your way just around the corner. Okay, I've eliminated the mercenaries, not a scratch on me. The target is using the bathroom. Oh. I see a bag of Taco Bell here. We should have plenty of time. Oh, man! Woo! I can't believe we're doing all this just to help this guy with a school assignment. Wait, this isn't Java. It's supposed to be C++. James, this guy clearly makes better life decisions than you do. What IDE is he using? Uh, Eclipse. Okay, read me the question. Okay, it's a reverse string question. Write a recursive method that accepts a string and returns a version that is reversed. You may assume the input is never null. We get some examples here of inputs and outputs. First, the simplest version of this problem is a string that is either empty or has one character. This will become our base case. If string has a length of one or less, return the string. Okay, listen to me carefully and type what I tell you. Does he have a main method already? Uh, you mean the main function? It's the same thing, James. Okay, you don't have to be so mean about it. Just shut up and type what I say. You're going to capitalize the S every single time I say string, okay? String, space, str, equals, open quotes, ABC, close the quotes, semicolon, next line, string, space, reversed, equals, reverse, string, capitalize the S on that string, open parentheses, str, close the parentheses, semicolon, next line, Wait, he's coming out. Knock, knock. Oh. Okay, I knocked them out. He'll be fine. STR dot char at. Make sure you capitalize the A on at. Open parentheses, zero, close the parentheses, semicolon, and make sure you got two brackets to end it and that's it. Got it. James, you've got 10 mercenaries approaching. Heh. <laughs> Only 10. Guys, what do you want from me? I watched too many 80s and 90s movies as a kid. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, make sure to smash the like button and to subscribe. And better yet, turn on the notification bell. That way you can get an alert each and every time that I upload a new video. Okay, let's get started. We all have a hard time choosing our first programming language. Some of you have maybe done hours of research on end and you still can't make a decision. And so you think to yourself, what's you know the best programming language that I can go with if I'm thinking about going the self-taught route or which language should I get familiar with if I'm considering going the computer science degree route? Should it be Python, Java, C, C++, JavaScript, Ruby? So many to choose from. I'll give you my perspective as a computer science student still early on in my degree, but we're also going to look at a few pros and cons among different languages across the board that you know kind of goes beyond the computer science degree perspective. I previously shared that my first line of code ever was in JavaScript. I actually did a few lessons on Code Academy, and that's really when I wanted to learn more about coding and the CES field in general. Surprisingly, I didn't focus on JavaScript after that. It was incredibly difficult for me to choose a specific language, and I was very, very hesitant about putting you know, so much time and effort on any specific language, which is a, a common concern among people, and understandably so, because 
we aren't entirely sure of which CS field we really want to sink our teeth into. Initially, we might have our eyes set on becoming a software developer, so we make a decision based on that, or we decide to get into data science and we decide to learn a programming language like Python. But we might realize later on that it's not the right CS field for us. And so making a final decision on a programming language can be very hard. Now the languages I was considering as my first language was Python or JavaScript. And at that time, I actually wasn't even completely set on whether I was gonna go the self-taught route or the CS degree route. So I decided to hold off for a bit until I was really sure. And for the time being, I stuck to the very unconventional route of just watching coding videos of several different languages. Finally, I came to the decision that a computer science degree was the right path for me. I still didn't select the language to focus my efforts on. I knew it was going to be either Python or Java or C++, but I still held off. I applied to a few different schools and fortunately got accepted into a few and made a decision on a school. And at that point, I knew that I was gonna be learning Java. And guess what? I still didn't dive into learning it until the classes actually started. I will admit that a big reason for that is because I was actually refreshing myself on math again, and I didn't want to overwhelm myself by trying to pick up Java at the same time. I also wanted to make sure that I got started with the correct Java concepts as a beginner and not choose a portion of Java that was just too advanced and either I'm wasting my time or even worse, that I would potentially psych myself out if I couldn't grasp it. Then classes started and I buckled down and did many of the problems in the book. I would redo problems that we did in our course labs and we, we actually had an assignment each week. And so once I was completely done with the assignment, I would try to redo the assignment again, try to, get, try to generate uh, the same output, but try to do it with a different approach. And that really helped me to think critically and to really build my problem solving skills. In my opinion, Java hasn't been extremely difficult to pick up. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely come with its challenges and I don't have a lot of experience with another language that I can really compare it to. But I recently started to learn C++ and honestly, I'm really glad Java was my first language. There are some similarities in the syntax, but in my opinion, Java is slightly easier to pick up than C++ if you're a beginner. And that does seem to be a common theme based on feedback and information that I've come across online that Java is actually easier to pick up than C++, but it's more difficult to pick up than Python. This is generally because Java improved upon C++, but Python improved upon Java. I think that if you're leaning towards pursuing a CS degree versus self-teaching yourself, then Python or Java would be two excellent choices to consider as your first language. Even though I took my sweet time and I didn't start doing any heavy coding until my classes actually started, I think you can confidently get familiar with at least the basics of either Python or Java even before you settle on a school and know which language that school puts an emphasis on. The beauty is that once you learn one language, picking up a different language is going to be easier. Like in my case, even though I'm not the biggest fan of C++ right now, it is easier for me to grasp because I went through that learning process in Java. But please do a little bit of research on your own. Just because Java or Python would be my first choice, that doesn't have to be your first choice. There may be a, a different language that really better suits and aligns with the aspirations that you have. Next, I want to cover some pros and cons on some of the most popular programming languages. We'll start with Python. I hear so many good things about Python that it's easier to pick up than a lot of other languages. It's easy to deploy. It's widely used to develop scalable web applications. Beginners love it. Experienced programmers love it. And one of my goals is to encourage people to get into programming regardless if it's the CS degree route or not. I really don't want people to get turned off from learning to code because they had a bad experience with complex syntax and other languages. If Python increases the likelihood of people picking things up easier, sticking with it, further progressing their skills, then I'm all for it. The pros of Python. Currently, Python is the main programming language for over 75% of developers. It has an extensive list of libraries that facilitates artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning processes. 
It focuses on code readability. It has the ability to scale even the most complex applications. It's ideal for building prototypes and testing out ideas faster. And it provides support for a multitude of platforms and systems. Now some cons of Python. It's not suitable for mobile computing. It's slower by virtue of being an inter interpreted programming language. And the database access layer is somewhat immature. Next up, let's look at Java. This language will always hold a special place in my heart. I'm glad it's the first language I've learned in depth. It's a popular choice in large organizations, and it has remained so for decades. It is widely used for building enterprise-scale web applications. Uh, known to be extremely stable, many large enterprises have adopted it for that reason. If you are looking for a software development role at a large organization, Java is one of the first languages that you should learn. The pros of Java. It has an abundance of open source libraries, automatic memory allocation and garbage collection. It follows the object-oriented programming paradigm. Uh, it has the stack allocation system. It has a high degree of platform independence thanks to the JVM feature. It's highly secure due to the exclusion of explicit pointer and inclusion of a security manager responsible for defining the access of classes. It also supports multi-threading. The cons of Java. There's an absence of templates which limits creating high quality data structures, uh, expensive memory management, and it's slower than natively compiled programming languages like C and C++. Next on our list is C++. It has a significant presence in the world of programming. Almost all low-level systems, such as operating systems and file systems, are written in C++. If you wish to be a system-level programmer, this is the programming language that you should learn. C++ is also widely used by competitive programmers, owing to the fact that it is extremely fast and stable. It provides something called STL, Standard Template Library. Some pros of C++. It has several compilers and libraries to work with. It has faster execution of programs than most programming languages. Forms the basis for understanding more complex programming languages. Language of choice for multi-device, multi-platform app development. It's got a rich function library. It runs close to the system hardware and hence offers a low level of abstraction. And it supports exception handling and function overloading. Now some of the cons of C++. It does have a, a complex syntax. There is no garbage collection or dynamic memory allocation. No runtime checking not an easy first choice for learning programming and it's plagued by the issues of buffer overflow and memory corruption last on our list is javascript this is the front end programming language javascript is widely used to design interactive front end applications Today, many organizations, often startups, use Node.js, a JavaScript-based runtime environment. Node.js lets developers use JavaScript for server-side scripting, running scripts server-side to produce dynamic web page content before the page is sent to the user's web browser. Some of the pros of JavaScript, client-side JavaScript is very fast. It runs immediately within the web browser as there is no compilation required. It makes a website's interface richer, highly versatile, acts as the programming language of the web, reduced website server demand by virtue of being client-side. There are several add-ons such as GreaseMonkey for extending functionality, simple implementation. Uh, there's plenty of resources and excellent community support. It's used for building a diverse range of applications and it works exceptionally well with other programming languages. Some of the cons of JavaScript, absence of copy or equivalent method allows only single inheritance. And as the code executes on the user machine, many people choose to disable JavaScript due to the fear of being exploited for a malicious intent. And it might be interpreted differently by different browsers. Again, guys, there is no right answer. It really all depends on the areas that you wanna focus on and where you see your career trajectory taking you. 
you're gonna build valuable skills regardless of the first language that you learn. And then that second, third, or fourth language is going to be easier to pick up than back when you were completely clueless at the start of your journey, just like I was. That wraps it up for this video. Again, don't forget to smash the like button and to subscribe. Please check out my other videos for more CS content and some more advice, guidance, tips and tricks. I'll continue to give insight on my experience and keep you posted on my CS journey. And I'll see you guys in the next video.